So today I wanted to do a workout, uh, a home workout which incorporates the push-up board. Okay. Now I've had a few, quite a, uh, a few comments on this push-up board about the positioning of the handles. So I just want to just touch on them before we go to the work. I just want to touch on these and why I think some of these positions uh, are bollocks, really. Okay. So what I'll do is show you the first two. Right. So you've got this one here. That position there. So it's it, it's chest and just here, right? And uh, on my review video of this, I said that it hits the triceps more than it does the chest. Well, what it actually wants you to do with that, right, is to come here like this, okay? I'll show you for just from an angle so you can see better. And what it wants you to do is do the inner chest. So your elbows, to do your inner chest, you need to flare your elbows outwards when you come down. Okay, that's what you need to do, okay? Let's stay. I'm only doing one, I'll tell you why in a minute. And then you've got this one for your shoulders. Okay, you see that? That's for your shoulders here. So you're facing that way. And what this wants to do is rotate the arms around, okay? So you're hitting more of that medial delt. And just here. Now, what both of these exercises are doing is internally rotating that shoulder and overly internally rotating that shoulder. And yes, okay, you will hit the medial delt and you will hit the inner chest, but at what cost? Okay, when you internally rotate the shoulder too much, it compromises the shoulder joints, okay? And what that can do is increase the chances of injury. So for me, the risk far outweighs the reward. Yeah, I could maybe exercise my delts and have a good inner chest, but if my shoulders are injured and I can't exercise, what good is that? There are far, far safer exercises you can do than them too for chest and shoulders. I can show you a better one for shoulders later on in the workout. Inner chest, really speaking, it'd be hard to do on this without using that, but you can get a resistance band if you're at home. In the gym, you use a cable machine. But you get a resistance band, attach it, put it across the body here, and you can feel your inner chest working. In saying that, the most chest exercises will work. The chest runs from here and attaches under here, okay, runs across. So whenever you do a movement, the inner chest is getting, you know, a workout anyway, pretty much when you do a normal presser. But if you want to really hit it, you would get a resistance band, come across the body, pull across the middle of the body with one arm, and really squeeze there and you will feel it more in the inner chest. So that's my take on these positions. The last position I want to go through with you is back. It claims you can work your back by putting it in uh, this position here. So back would be this one here. Okay. And realistically, these are all pushing exercises. There's no pulling involved. So the back, only, it's only there as a, an assistive muscle group. So it only, it only kind of stabilizes your body while you're doing the push-up or press-up. You're not really gonna get a good back workout using this. Um, you need to work that posterior chain. This is the anterior chain, posterior chain this year. And you're not gonna get a good back workout when you're pushing away. Yes, the lats will stabilize the push-up a little bit, more if you bring it in a bit narrow, but you really need to work your back. So I would almost, <coughs> So if you're going to spend money, 30, 40 or 50 pound on this, invest 20 quid on one of these door pull-up bars. Uh, and they, I have seen them on Amazon for under 20 pound. There's some more expensive. This one was 19 quid, I think. So invest in that as well. And if you can't do a pull-up, there is an alternative I can show you using this bar. And hang on for that. Okay, so before we get to do the workout, make sure you warm up, okay? Now you can do any type of warm-ups. You can do... Jumping jacks, running on the spot, um, rotating the shoulders, anything, but make it about five minutes so once you finish you feel a little bit out of breath and a little bit tacky, a little bit sweaty. It's no good going into a, a workout cold because again you're increasing your chance of getting an injury. So without any further ado, let's get on to the workout. One thing I'm very keen on is to do the exercise properly. Okay, now you see a lot of people, and I'm sure 
You know someone, you bet you do. Do you know someone, or are you the person? I don't know. You tell me. Ah. Anyway, but so you, you always get these people who say, how many press-ups can you do? I can do 50, 60, 100. And then you see them do a push-ups or press-ups, and it's like this. <laughs> oh, yeah, 50 press-ups, come on, man. I mean, what the hell is that? Okay, when you're exercising, the trick is, is to do the exercise so you're really specifically concentrating on the exact muscle you're working, okay? Stop, if you're cheat, if you're cheating, you're only cheating yourself. Stop thinking of numbers all the time and focus on the exercise. Now, because you're using a push-up board, you need to go to failure, okay? And the, the trick is, is to make sure you, you do the exercise properly and you use concentric and eccentric muscle action. Now, I've mentioned this before in many of my videos, eccentric doesn't mean just lowering the weight. It's lowering under tension, okay? So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do, I set the handles to the widest position here. And the good thing about this, as I've mentioned before, you can go nice and deep, get a good stretch across the chest, okay? And I'm gonna go to failure. But not so much failure that, that I'm contorting my body. And when I do the push-up, okay, when I'm doing the push-up, my back's nice and straight, I hold my stomach in, and I'm coming down, chest is down here, and back up. And look, look at my speed. One, two, three, one, two. Okay, I'm just gonna go to failure now. See, I went, I couldn't do another one using good form. I probably could have done another one if I controlled my body, but that's when you should start getting injuries. And I didn't, I didn't even count that. I mean, it is good to count, but don't focus just on the number. Because what happens is, is that you go, right, I've, if someone gives you a program and you go, you've got to do 10 reps. Now, if I've got nothing in my hand, I do 10 reps. Nine, 10. I've done 10, done me, I'm going to be, oh, I'm going to be so fit now because of this. Well, not really, because you've done 10, and that's done nothing to exercise your bicep. Nothing at all. <laughs> 10, meh. So don't focus too much on the number. So if you are going to aim for 10, and you get the 10, and you're going, well, that was really easy, then keep going until you can't do another one. Especially when you're using sort of calisthenic workouts, you should be going to almost failure, or I would say maybe one rep short. I like to go complete failure personally. Um, I think that, you know, stimulates the body to, to strengthen the muscle more, okay? So that's that. Now, so I've done my push-up, okay? And I've gone to failure on that. Now, there's no point in me going straight into another push-up, really. Or say I want to do another exercise. I'm going to do triceps now. Now, my triceps are pretty much obliterated from that. Even though that's a chest workout, your triceps are, are highly activated doing that press-up or push-up. So you need to do the opposing muscle groups, so the posterior chain. So this is the anterior chain where you're pushing, and this is the posterior chain, okay, where you're pulling. So you need to add a pulling exercise. Remember what I said? You can't do a back workout when you're pushing away. Not a, not a proper one. So this is where the pull-up bar comes in. So, so we're coming on to pull-up bar, and the reason I'm chucking to myself is I just did a set of pull-ups. I went through all, all the explanation. I didn't have the bloody camera running. And I did over 100 pull-ups. I didn't really. <laughs> I'm full of tracks, all right? No, I did uh, 10 pull-ups, okay? So I probably won't be able to do as many now. Damn! I want to look good for the video. Everybody does, don't they? Okay, well, anyway, who cares how good I look? I'll do as many as I can. It okay, doesn't matter. So, anyway, what I said when the camera wasn't running, okay, was it's best to have your hands just outside shoulder width. You can't go very wide in these door ones. They're not too wide at all. I'm going to do the pull-up. I want to use good form. Pausing at the top, pausing at the bottom, 
and make sure you're lowering in the tension it's eccentric lowering in the tension yeah okay and I want to get my chin above that bar that's my focus okay let's see how my neck do now <laughs> oh, I went all up on the last one oh, damn okay <sighs> never mind an extra set is good for me anyway so I try to keep my stomach in keep my legs fixed don't let them swim too much Okay, and from there then, come right up over the top and back down. Oh, let's see if I can get one more. Come on. Come on, do me a fanny. Come on. Oh. <laughs> anyway, that's not bad. I got seven at that time. Um, so, now, a lot of you who, who may be beginners who haven't been doing exercise long, I do appreciate that doing a pull-up is quite difficult, okay? So what you can do, you can still have a pull-up bar and you keep it for when you can do pull-ups. So what you can do is you can get a towel. Now this is a bar, like a beach towel. I prefer to use beach towels, they're a bit thinner and easier to grip. If you get a big, thick, fluffy bath towel, they're quite hard to keep a grip on and you may slip off. Okay, so what you do, you've got this bar here, Pop it around there, okay, and you grab either side. And all you do is keep your feet on the floor and use your legs as stabilizers, okay? Try not to push too much with your legs, use all upper body. So from here, so what I do is I keep my legs just on the floor, okay, and pulling with my body and just using my legs just a very little bit just to assist me. Try and get all the pull in those legs. In those legs, in those arms, I mean. <laughs> I've done too many pull-ups. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, so you pull in, okay, right, with your arms. And the legs are just there, just to gently assist. Don't push too hard with your legs. Then, there's another alternative, which is easier again. If you can find that too hard, you wrap it around the middle of the bar, okay. You put your feet against either side of the door frame from here. Grab the end of the towel, make sure they're even on both sides. Stomach in, I'm pulling up to here. I mean, you can even do a face pull. And so with a face pull, you put your arms up to the ceiling, your palms up to the ceiling, and from here, you're pulling up and out. The face pull is really good for that rotator cuff. But make sure you do them properly. You come up towards the face. The elbow should be a parallel and the palms should be facing that way and the thumbs facing out. So that's the alternative if you can't do a standard pull-up. And as you get stronger, try the pull-up bar and try at least one pull-up. Then two, then three. And as you get stronger and stronger, you can do more and more. Okay, so next exercise. Okay. We've done chest now with the, with the wide grip. We've done our back, the lats with the pull-up, okay? And now what I want to do is the shoulders. Now remember I go back to what I said at the beginning. Okay, this is where they want you to put them. No, no, no. Shoulder, okay? So what you do, let's go another shoulder one here, just here. So I'll come and show you. So it's basically angled downwards now. And this is a much safer position. You're not, you're not inwardly rotating that shoulder, okay? And what you do is call it a pike push-up. Now, this can be quite difficult to master, and you can make them harder, which I'll show you in a sec by putting them up, your feet up onto an elevated surface. But I'll just do the standard pike. So from here, what you do, now it doesn't matter if you're not that flexible, I'm not particularly flexible, but you stick your bum up in the air, okay? Try and get your feet as close as you can without bending your legs, because when you're bringing them in, your legs start bending, okay? Because your hamstrings are not flexible enough, like mine. So from here, okay, and you lean over, and from there, you're coming down, and keep the elbows in line with this, where your wrist is going, okay? Don't try and reposition your elbows. So I'm just going to finish this exercise now on the shoulders. Now, that was 
really good. I can really feel that on my medial delt. Whereas uh, with that, it's going to comp it compromise your shoulders. So by sticking your bum up in the air and leaning over the top, you're bringing in more medial delt. It's almost very similar to a shoulder press, not quite exactly the same, um, but it is. Now, you can't, you can't, the advanced version of this will be to elevate your feet and then put it up. I'll just show you that in a second. So, the advanced version of this is just pop your feet on here, very, very similar position, but what it does is it actually pushes you a bit more forward so you get more emphasis on the shoulder, but it is a little bit harder, okay? So, from here, you put your feet up on here, like this, okay? And now you can see a much higher over the board. So that's going to really emphasize that medial delt. So that's actually better on the medial delt than the, than the normal pipe pusher. Because by putting your feet up, as I said, it moves you even more forward, which focuses that downward tension on the medial delt. Right, I'm just making sure this is recording now. Yes, <laughs> okay. So, we've just done shoulders, and the muscle, another muscle group, the secondary muscle group that's involved in exercise is the tricep. So what I'm gonna do now is do something for the anterior chain, so the posterior chain, okay, which is the bicep. I wanna give my tricep a little bit of a rest before I do some uh, tricep exercises. Okay, so, basically it's a close grip chin up. So you can go a little bit wider here. Yes, you're still going to hit the back, but you're still going to hit the bicep, sorry. <laughs> okay. But you're going to hit the back a little bit more than you want to. I want to focus on the, on the biceps. So I just bring my arms a little bit closer. The pads are actually on you, telling you where to place your hands anyway. And that's pretty much perfect for me. Probably about whew, maybe 10 centimeters apart, five, six inches apart, something like that around about there. Okay, and very similar to a pull-up, just your palms are facing under towards the ceiling and your, when you put them on there, your palms are facing you and again, you just want to bring your chin over the bar. Now, what I want to do as well is come up and fully extend my arms to get a full extension all the way down and back up. Okay, do a little bit of cheating, okay? So you get to the top, I don't even know why I can get up there now, my biceps are shattered. <laughs> okay, and what you do then is just just small little ones, almost like a drop set. So you're, little, you're cheating a little bit by not doing the full extension, but just to get that extra pump in the bicep at the end. Okay, that's the biceps done now. Now, we go over the triceps. Okay, so on the triceps now. And then what I've done, I've stepped them into the centre. So you've got that, that position there, into the centre of the shear, okay? And essentially what they're doing is, they're mimicking a diamond push-up. So a diamond push-up, it's pretty much your hands are here. It doesn't have to be in that exact position. That's just an example, okay? They may manipulate it a bit here and there. But that's about the general position they should be in about mid chest tight so you, they need to be where your nips are okay in the center there that's where your hand should be that the middle of that diamond okay or tr it looks more like a triangle really but there we are so you pop your hands here when you're doing a diamond push-up you come over the body okay and keep the elbows close to the butt to the side of the body okay and that's a diamond push-up now, so this is a very similar position, okay? Except it's the hands, the hands are obviously slightly different. Rather than being here, they're going to be here. So they may be slightly better on the wrist for you, but what you may find is that your wrist, your hand tends to slip off. Now, if you find you're having a problem gripping these handles, then by all means, get some maybe weightlifting gloves, something like that, okay? And it may help you grip better, but don't start relying on them. You want your hands to get stronger 
eventually. So, you know, try and limit the use of the weightlifting gloves until you really need them, okay? If you feel your hands are slipping when you get tired, then by all means put them on. Don't rely too heavily on them, okay? You want to build up some good tough skin and good strength in the, in the hand and wrist. Okay, ready. Now what you can do as well, if you find you're struggling to balance, okay, I prefer to do it with my legs closed because if you do it with your feet together, you're going to work that core a little bit more. Okay? But what you can do is spread the legs outwards a little bit to give you that more balance. But you won't work the core quite as much. Totally up to you. If you feel you're losing balance, not gripping very well, by all means take the legs out. Or, as you're starting to fail and your body's getting tired, you can you know, open your stance a little bit so you maybe you can push the next couple of reps. Okay, let's go straight into it now. So you come right down here, keep them elbows to the side, over the middle of the chest. Come on, I can do one more. Oh, come on. Okay, that's the triceps then. Now, if I can speak. <sighs> okay, so, then the chest, the biceps, triceps, and the back, okay? Now, never forget to do your legs. Nothing worse than having weak legs. You're all like this upper body, and you put a pair of shorts on, and it looks like you just walked out of the sparrow's nest. Okay? <laughs> So, look, my legs are never going to be the biggest legs in the world. I'm 54 years old, but it doesn't stop me from exercising. I'm, I want to keep them strong, even if I can't get them any bigger, okay? I'll strive to get them bigger, but look, at 54, I'm not, on, I'm not taking any magic medicine, okay? This is, all, this is all me. So, you know, I can't do uh, certain things because of my age. I also have rheumatoid arthritis, so I'm limited by the disease I have, plus my age. That's not an excuse though, to not do legs. I, I don't use an excuse, who cares about that? Pfft. Age is just a number, who cares about room time like this? Okay, so don't use anything as an excuse not to do legs. Someone said to me once, well, legs don't look good in a t-shirt, but they look great in shorts, you fucking twat. <laughs> okay, so if you haven't got any equipment, then Bulgarian split squats is what the okay, first so thing you do some Bulgarian split squats. Now, it's a weird camera angle because I have to set it up so you can see what I'm doing with my legs, so I have to duck my head down. Okay. Um, right. So what you do, you come to wherever you're going to put your leg up on. Take a two shoulder width step forward, so quite a big step, okay, here. Make sure your legs stay shoulder width apart. Otherwise, what'll happen is you'll be doing all this nonsense, okay? So legs shoulder width apart. Take two, two shoulder width step forward. Yeah, so I'm still shoulder width apart. Yeah, okay, and then from there, I just put my foot on here, down. And then what you're doing, you're coming down. See, so either your knee touches the floor or your leg goes at least parallel, okay? Maybe even a little bit lower. The trick is as well, <laughs> is when you're doing it, when you're coming down, make sure that knee is tracking in line with that second toe. Don't let your knee go over here. Don't let your knee do this or that. It goes up, okay, it keeps over that toe, the second toe from your big toe, okay? Now I'm lucky enough to have a set of dumbbells. It doesn't matter if you haven't got dumbbells, you just keep going till you can't do any more. It's a failure, okay? If it takes you 20 or 30 reps, keep going until you can't do any more. Okay, so I'm gonna get started. I mean I've only got 10 kilograms, but it's enough so I can probably fail around 12 if I'm lucky. Okay. <laughs> Pop your foot on here. And then coming down. Nice and easy. Remember, eccentric, lowering and the tension. And now you've got to do the other side. What I'm finding with this, this sofa's just a tiny little bit too low for me. I can't get quite as deep as I want to. But there we are. So maybe I should have maybe used that chair over there, which is a little bit higher. But it is what it is. I'll just finish off on here now. <sighs> oh. 
Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is some abs. And I'm gonna do some abs on the pull-up bar. So now I'm gonna finish off, can't even speak. Now I'm gonna finish off. Now I'm going to finish off uh, doing some abs on the pull-up bar. And obviously, if you can't do the pull-up bar and hang off and do them, just do some normal crunches on the floor. It doesn't really make a difference, okay? Well, it does because these are harder, but it's better doing something rather than nothing, okay? You can progress to these if you haven't done them before. Now, what I find with these is a lot of people do them incorrectly, okay? So what they tend to do, they tend to use too much hip flexor. So they, they, they tend to just use hip flexor as this, okay? Let me just put the camera down so you can see that a little bit better. Hiya, hello, hello, hiya mum. Okay, <laughs> right, so they tend to just sort of bring the knees up like this. Okay, it's still low enough, I'm not happy with that. Let's go a bit lower. I need to see where my hands are. I need to see where my legs are. Okay. So they tend to just do bring the knees up like this. And yeah, you will get some ab exit activation but you're not going to get a lot. The trick is, is you've got to get your bum, oh, don't want to sound callous, but you get your bum, you know, your sheriff's badge, facing forward, okay? You want to have it so you bring your bum around, curl under, so that when the stomach activates, it wants to curl together. When you do a crunch, you curl together, okay? You need to get that bum underneath. It's much harder, and, and it doesn't make it, so you can't do as many reps, so you can't show off as much, okay? So, what you need to do is come up, come up here, and I curl, and so I'm curling there. And that movement is important. Bring your legs down, curl to the top. So I'm trying to get my bum. If I didn't have short term now when people were standing in front of me, they'd be calling the police. See, it's much harder, and I can really feel my stomach activated on that. Oh. Now, if you don't feel a burn in the stomach, like I do now, then you're not doing it properly, and you're just using all hip flex and no abs. So remember, get that bum to come forward and crunch that stomach together, okay? Okay, so that's the workout finished. Um, I got a good sweat on there, quite good. Enjoy that, okay? Now, I tend to do one set of each to failure, and that's my workout done. Nice, short and sharp, but I work out more often. So I work out probably at least five times a week, and I give myself two rest days, okay? And that's the beauty of when you just do one set of something, you can actually do it more in the week. However, if you haven't got that much time, then by all means, you can just have, do it like a circuit. So do one round, rest for a few minutes, five minutes or so, have a drink, then do another round, Rest again and do another round. It's totally up to you. You can add as many rounds as you want. Probably three is about the maximum I would go personally. It depends how many times you train in a week. Um, but most researchers found if you train a body part more than once a week, okay, you're going to get better results. Um, so it's totally up to you how you want to do it. You can also do it the three sets of 10 method or the three sets to failure method. But if you, do, if you are doing three sets of 10, make sure that 10th one is to almost failure. Do this do 10 and go, done my three sets of 10, bam. No, okay, make sure that 10th one is to failure. If it's not, do 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20, to infinity until you fail, okay? Uh, anyway, so that's the work I've done for today. Look, if you like this video, and you like my content, and you haven't subscribed, why not? Come on! Go on! You know you want to. Go on! Go on! <laughs> Hit that subscribe button. Bang that bell. And give this video a like. Why not? You've got nothing to lose. You're not losing anything by doing it here. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon.